Me and Athletes for Impact, uh, we wanted to do an event about black resilience in the African diaspora because there's so many different types of black all over the world. And that we all have like a similar story. We might speak a different language, but we share something very common, the color of our skin and our history. So this is a great opportunity not to focus on like the victimization of it, but also focus on how we're building. These struggles are so intertwined, but people don't know that they're happening. Yeah. You know, what's happening at the border, what's happening in Africa, what's happening in Brazil. Exactly. It's like black people all across the globe are experiencing a certain trauma that we don't talk about. And there's a lot of people that are black that are doing things that people don't know. And that's what this whole event really is about, is kind of bridging and bringing those people together so we can bring our resources or bring our you know ideas or creativity together to, to to say, oh, you're doing this? Oh, wow, I got this thing. Okay, let me have this. Oh, so you need food? Oh, I know architect. I know somebody that is like, because it's like, it's now we're so like, not in the same crowds that we don't know who's doing it, you know? Because it's at the end of the day, it's not about heroism, it's about humanity. What, I mean, what do we, what can we do, right? Yeah. It, it's not what, what, about what can somebody else do. Exactly, exactly. What can we do? Yeah, because, because That's what Black History Month to me is like, it's like, I see Kanye West talking about Black Futures Month, and that's the truth. I feel like it's the this idea of like we could got a chance to hold of ourselves and be our own heroes and be our own builders. Like, what can we do? Like, yeah. that's so what this month about. It's not about the old history; no, it's about no. the new, yeah, no. like the and, same. And to go forward. Go yeah. forward. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's good to understand the past, but sometimes I feel like we get so stuck in the past, yes. Yes. And, and and not only that, we get so stuck in the current. Woo! Sankofa. Yeah. Everything's yes. connected. Yes. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Everybody's looking beautiful as usual. It's good to see black people everywhere. No offense to the white people in the crowd. You guys are more than welcome to be here, but you know, it's, it's Black History Month. It, this is a great opportunity, uh, me and Athletes for Impact. Uh, we wanted to do an event about black resilience in the African diaspora because there's so many different types of black all over the world. And that we all have like a similar story. We might speak a different language but we share something very common, the color of our skin and our history. So this is a great opportunity not to focus on like the victimization of it, but also focus on how we're building. I think we, during this last two years during COVID, we saw a lot of trauma, a lot of trauma porn, a lot of trauma every single day. But the opportunity to talk about black business, black wealth, who's doing black culture, the black art, black sports, just humanity and the humanitarian that we all share, I think this is a great opportunity and so to have these chats and talk about, you know, our great sister right here who's working on the border with the Haitian immigrants and migrants, it's a big issue going around. But for us to understand not only what's happening in America to us, but what's happening globally to us and how we can, as people, build. And I think this is a great opportunity to have this. What, what is happening in real time along the U.S.-Mexico border? I don't know how to answer. I, I honor you and I love you so much for being on this difficult journey with us. Thank you. You're making me um, emotional, so you need to stop saying those things. <laughs> um, we, we all saw what happened in the Rio in September. Uh, if you were on Earth, if you were able to turn on your TV set, we saw white men on back horse chasing and whipping black people at the U.S.-Mexico border. That is the reality. That is something we have been dealing with for a very long time. But just like everything else, when it comes to black lives and black voices, they are erased. They are non-existent. Uh, so therefore, when I received the call in 2015, and I was told there were black people at the U.S.-Mexico border. I could not believe it. I'm an immigrant. I'm from Haiti. 
but I was privileged enough to get on a plane and come to New York. Uh, I had an education and I ran away from my parents and I came to California um, to really see how my background is in entertainment technology, system engineering by trade. And thinking I'm coming to California, I'm going to make it big in Hollywood, behind the scene, only to receive a call to tell me that they have black people at the US-Mexico border. And I just went out of curiosity to see what was happening. How did you get here? And I met with 12 young men and women between the ages of 19 to 25. And they started explaining to me that they walked, they literally walked from Brazil to the United States. And in my privilege, I could not understand how can you walk for five months in search for protection, in search for freedom, in search for safety. And then I started realizing not only Not only was it necessary for them, it was forced upon them. Due to I internal violence, external violence, foreign policies, natural disasters, making it impossible for people to stay home. And we talk about immigration, their voices are not there. So we went to the border for the Haitians, we stayed for everyone. And we were able to not only build a space and a home for our people, we have to also be able to create the first black immigrants bail fund in 2020 to be able to pay ransom to the US government to free black bodies. Why did you want to put this together? It's called Michael Bennett and Friends. Like what, what was so important about the African diaspora, athletes, others that come together for this event? Thank you so much. It's, I was so, yeah, I'm trying not to cry up here while you talking because I know the emotions and the things that you experienced through your journey and how much courage it takes to come talk about these things, um, and especially people that don't know you and what you're experiencing. But for me, um, growing up as an African-American in America, I always wanted to understand the history of Africa. So back in 2016, I went to Senegal and was in the um, Gori Island, and I went and did my African DA and went to my tribe and did all these different things. And I experienced Africa for the first time. And it was actually the first time that I ever felt like I belong so I belong there. Um, I belong somewhere. I mean, there was many nights I was with my wife. We had so many emotional nights of crying because I'm like, man, I was like, dang, my grandmother left here and never came back. And I'm like, why, why that feeling of being like somebody being pulled from where they belong and taking somewhere that they don't want to be and creating a new life. And so for me, I always felt like dealing with that and going through that. It just made me want to bring people together to understand how important we are, how important it is for us as African Americans and African people of the diaspora to connect. If we look at all the struggles, if we look at struggles that happen um, during every time we look at Congo, we look at what's happening in Ghana and um, Nigeria or Senegal, these are all our ancestors that we don't know their stories. And how do we bridge the gap to say that that history is ours too? And so bringing the people together in this kind of conversation, using my platform and and taking on going on my own journey and that journey that I just share with people because I think it's so much deeper than the human experience that we have and it's really about the spiritual things that we connect and how we build our spiritual um, fortress and I think that's why I use this platform because I know that there's a lot of people out here searching for something and when we have the opportunity to have these kind of communion and these kind of collaborations and this kind of gathering we can share our experiences and through our experiences I hope that people feel healing and I think as an athlete you know, sometimes you get on these platforms and people think because you're an athlete, there's a sense of this caste system that you pulled away from your humanity and you're not black no more, man. You got money. It's like, but at any moment you could be, you could be reminded of, you see athletes all the time. They're going, I think OJ, Jay-Z made the best song, the story of OJ. That's a really reality. doesn't matter how much success you have. People always see you as, as that, you know? So like for us not to forget our culture, when we get to a certain place, not to forget uh, our history and what we're supposed to be doing with this platform. Just because we have a gift, that the gift doesn't always mean what our purpose is. And searching for our purpose and engaging in our community and how important it is to continuously build. I think about um, Booker T. Washington and W. E. Du Bois a lot as I studied them a lot for um, 2019 and 2020. 
kind of just studying what happened at the Reconstruction period and what they were focused on and black building and black wealth. And that doesn't actually always mean like, you know, just money, but also building um, systems and building um, social importance and also just building um, reconstruction and who we are in general and education, medical architecture and just design in general and using that platform to discover that more is why I think this is important. I feel privileged uh, and truly humbled to, to be here. And I want to acknowledge everything that was saying before. Um, many of us across the border, I came from across the border too, maybe across the water. Yeah. Um, and what, what I want to say is that it will take many ways for us to be able to reduce the pain that we see on the borders today. Yeah. And I'm gonna speak to what I know. And what I know is what to do back home where I come from, which is in Togo. And what we have come to understand is what are the opportunities that bring dignity to our people where we are so that we don't have to cross the border. So for the past 18 years, I've put my life into that. And what I meant is, can we provide jobs for our people that is directly relevant to the skills that we have today? And in Togo, 70% of our, of our women, like my mother, does not know how to read and write. And I want to say very, very, very quickly, I'm not saying read and write measures with any intelligence by any means, but it just means that you can't get a job in today's world. So therefore, the skills that we have are indigenous skills. So if you ask me what I'm doing so that we don't have to cross the border, it's people like, like, like us, all of us here, what we can do back home. That's right. And what I'm doing home is providing the jobs for women like my mother. And I, I remember about eight years ago, Nafisa is one of the women that are part of Alapia Cooperative. And she came to me and she said, my father wants me to thank you. And I said, thank, thank you, what, how so? And she said, well, because my father said, now I get to stay home, I don't have to go to Nigeria to cross Benin. There's many borders around the world. That's right. yeah. To go work as a, as a dental servant so that I can come back to my children in Togo. Wow. Now, because I have a job, like a teacher, I can stay right there in Togo. I don't have to leave my family. And I get more respect for my health, husband because I bring money home. Yeah. And, and, and that was very touching to me. Yeah. We're in the era of give a man a fish. What are the plans to teach us how to fish? Not knowing how to access food, not knowing how to grow food, is probably one of the biggest detriments to us. And I think that, you know, for us, we were also trying to figure out, you know, with, in Los Angeles, like, we need to be able to also create things that are self-sustaining. So what if it doesn't have a water source? Like, we, we were asking all these questions about, if we weren't around, how could this, Pod still work, um, and part of it is both sharing it with the community, but also bringing in black farmers who are programming it six months out of the year to teach people how to use it. And I think that that has been, it's been really powerful. It's been powerful to witness folks, because a lot of people, there's also a lot of assumptions about what people do, especially houseless folks, and a lot of folks have said, oh yeah, I used to do this with my grandma. Like, we used to grow this, or we, I, I know how to grow food. I used to grow beans. Like, so there's also a lot of there's a lot of knowledge inside the community that we don't recognize, um, especially when it comes to food justice, especially when it comes to food growing. For for me specifically, I look what what I do. What I could do, I know we need schools in Togo, so I build schools. I know that if we build school our youngsters will be able to gain the education they need. How they can find a job, that's on, the, that's on them. I know that we need to have job for our women. So I, what I can do is a place so that women can work in a manner that is respectful to our culture. What they do with that money, I cannot say otherwise. But it's a real, that's why I said that we have to look deep in our heart what touches us and try to resolve that. And from there, I think each individual is going to take a path. And the hope is that it will take a path that's positive, positive and contributing to the community. I just want to thank everybody for uh, coming today and enjoying the talk. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but um, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to share a platform with so many great people, a lot of business owners, people who are doing things in the culture, just in individuals, everybody that came out. I want to thank my wife, of course, 
Um, just thank everybody. Hit the music. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike, spike the skills. Facts. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta like the we get wheels straight up. But in the pass bag, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread. I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. 